the Omega Zero is a great board for doing IoT projects and home automation. And in today's video, I want to show you how I'm using it to control my Elgato Ski Light Air using the embedded Wi-Fi module in this board. But also, I want to demonstrate one of the key benefits of the Admega Zero, which is the compatibility with some of the Raspberry Pi hats. For this project, I'm going to be using the Unicorn Hat Mini from Pi Maroni, which was designed for the Raspberry Pi, but works perfectly with the Admega Zero board. This Pi hat will allow us to use the four push buttons to control the lights for our demo at the end of this video. Let's get started. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Eddie from Full Hacker. Before I start, I wanna thank every one of you who has subscribed to my channel. If this is your first time here, I hope you find some values in these videos. Don't forget to smash that like button if you do. That will help YouTube to suggest this video to others that has the same interest as you do. It will also help me grow my channel and motivates me to keep making these videos on a regular basis. Thanks again and enjoy this video. As I mentioned in the introduction, I will be showing you how I use the Atmega Zero ESP32-S2 to hack into Elgato's Keylight Air API and use it to control the lights without having to use the mobile app that came with this light. A little background about these lights, I recently bought them to improve the quality of my videos for my YouTube channel. At first, I was using my iPhone to record the videos, but I found it hard to use the phone to record and also having to control the lights from the same device. These lights don't come with a physical remote control, but Elgato's do provide a nice app for the computer and for the mobile devices. Or you can use the Stream Deck by programming one of the buttons to control the light to turn on or off. But since I don't have one, the first thing that came to mind was how about making my own remote control using the Atmega Zero. And that's exactly what I did let me show you how. First, we need to find out how these lights communicate with the desktop or mobile app. Since I am an iOS developer, there's a tool that I use when troubleshooting network traffic and APIs. I usually use a proxy server app called Charles, which let us intercept the traffic in our network and see what kind of information we are sending and receiving. I'm not going to dive deep into this topic, and this is not the main focus of this video. Before we start, make sure to install Elgato's desktop app on your computer. Open Elgato's website, click the Downloads button from the top menu, then from the Select Your Product dropdown, I'm going to choose the Keylight Air since that's the one that I have. In my case, I'm going to install the Mac app version, but there's also a Windows version available too. I already have mine installed, so I'm going to skip this part. Next, let's install the Charles Proxix app. Visit charlesproxy.com and click the download button from the top menu. Now, download the setup file for the OS you are using. In my case, I'm using the Mac, so I'll choose the Mac version. Again, I'm going to skip the installation since I already have it installed on my computer. Now that we have both apps installed, Let's see how the desktop app communicates with the key lights. Open the Charles app. Let's use it to snip the traffic coming to and from my computer and the key lights which are connected in the same network. Once you open Charles, you will see all of the requests that any app is making from my computer to the internet or any of the local devices. To see the request from the key light, open the control center app and try to turn on or off the lights. As soon as you do that, you should see Charles list the requests coming from the lights. If we inspect the requests, we can see that we are sending different type of requests. We have get, but we also have put. So whenever you tell the lights to turn on or off, you are sending a put request to update the status on the lights. And we can see the information that is sending here. And we can also see the raw value here that is putting, sending a put request to the URL and it's sending this information here. And if you see closely here, it says on and it's equal to one. So it means turn on the light. And if we look at the second one, it was a zero. So that means turn it off. So by using this information, we can now put that in our code 
and we'll be able to send the request on the lights to turn on or off. So let's do that now. For this to work, we need to first import the request library. I went into details on how to download and install the correct CircuitPython libraries for this board in the previous video. If you have not watched it, I'll place a link in the description of this video so you can watch it later. Let's go ahead and download the library and copy it to the lib folder in the CircuitPython drive. So now that you downloaded the files, let's go inside the lib folder and search for request. And you will see the library here that we need. Just, just click and drag it inside the lib folder on your CircuitPython drive. Since we're going to be using the Unicorn Hat Mini, we are going to need a library that is going to allow us to communicate with it using CircuitPython. I'm going to place a URL to my GitHub repository so you can download the Unicorn Hat Mini library that I'm using. Once you download it, just click and drag it inside the project, but don't place it inside the lib folder, just place it on the root directory in the same place where your code lives. So now that we have the libraries installed, let's write some code. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code as my code editor. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the CircuitPython drive inside it. Okay, so go ahead and delete the print statement that you see there. And let's import some of the libraries that we're going to need. So I'm going to start with import time. So we can do some delay. I'm going to go ahead and import the unicorn hat mini that we added and import Unicorn hat mini like that. Since we're going to be using the Wi Fi module, let's import Wi Fi. I'm going to do this in one line because they are all related to the Wi Fi. So let's do socket pool. We can also do SSL like that. And the other thing we're going to need is the library that we just installed from Adafruit. So we're going to do Adafruit request. And finally, we're going to need to use JSON. Okay. So now that we did that, let's go ahead and create a file so we can store our SSID and the password of our Wi-Fi network. You can hard code that here in the project or you can just create a new file for it. And I prefer to put them in a separate file. So let's create a file called secrets.py. And what we're going to do here, we're just going to create a dictionary called secrets is equal to, let's do a S SSID, so for our Wi-Fi network, and I'm gonna call that whatever is yours. I'm gonna say mine is called that connection. And then you need your password. And here you're gonna enter your password. I'm gonna enter mine, but I'm gonna cut it from the video. Okay, so now that we created the secrets file, let's import it into the project. So do this. So the try from secrets, just to make sure that it that it exists, import secrets, which is the dictionary. And if it doesn't exist, throw an exception, import error, and we can just print whatever you want to say here. So Wi-Fi secrets are kept in secrets.py whatever you want to put there doesn't matter and we're going to make sure that we raise an exception so that way the, the app is going to crash because we need to connect to the wi-fi module in order for this to work so the next thing we're going to do is create some of the reference to the key lights and if you remember in charles there are two urls that we're going to need in order to hit the endpoint or in order to communicate with the light Let's get those two URLs from Charles now. So go ahead and open Charles. Let's go ahead and get this URL here. So this is for one of the lights. So we have two key lights. So we have one that ends, in my case, 81EC and 8185. So all we have to do is grab this URL here and let's minimize it because we're going to need the other one. And you can create a variable here for that. So you can say um, key lights number one is equal to this and key light 2 is equal to we're gonna get the other one now so go ahead and copy the other key light URL so 
So these are the two URLs for the two key lights that I have. And we're gonna need that in order to send requests to turn the lights on or off. So let's initialize now the Unicorn Hat Mini in order for us to use the four push buttons. So let's initialize it with Unicorn, Unicorn Hat Mini is equal to Unicorn, like that. And then we're gonna initialize it. Okay, so now let's initialize our connection to the Wi-Fi. So we can say connect to Wi-Fi here. Just so that we can debug it and say connecting to Wi-Fi here. Okay, so we're gonna do Wi-Fi radio, connect, and here we're gonna pass it SSID is equal to, so remember that we wrote we are importing secrets. We have a dictionary that has the keys of SSID, so we can have access to it by calling secrets. And then here we're gonna say SSID, okay? So then we need to pass the password. And again, we're gonna access it from the secrets file, so we're gonna say secrets. And here we're gonna say password. Okay? And if this is successful, we should be able to say print my IP address and here we can get the IP from the Wi-Fi radio and then we're gonna access to IPv4 address like that. If this connects successfully, we should be able to see our IP address here. Okay, so the next thing we have to do, we gotta create a we gotta create a socket pool. To do that, we can say, we're gonna need this variable later, so we're gonna say pool is equal to socket pool, like that. Socket pool, again. And we're gonna initialize it with the Wi-Fi radio. Now we gotta create a variable for request, and that's gonna be based on the Adafruit request library that we imported, so we're gonna say Adafruit request, like that. And then we're gonna do session, and we're gonna pass the pool that we just created, SSL, create, we're gonna create a context here. So create default context like that and initialize it. Okay, we're also gonna need a headers so we can pass it later when we're making the request. We're gonna just say headers, and this is just a dictionary. We're gonna say content type, and the value for that is gonna be application. I don't think this is needed by the way, just, I'm just gonna do it just to have it because that's what I have on my code. Now let's create our loop and try to get the reading from the push button. So let's say while true. So this is our loop and it's gonna be reading the value of the push buttons on the unicorn hat. So let's create a reference to our first button. We're gonna call this button A, it could be whatever you want. I'm gonna call it button A. And since we already have a unicorn hat mini variable here, we're gonna have access to it. And there's a get state for the A, like that. And this is part of the library. So if you open the this library here, you're gonna see all this code, which doesn't matter, but we're just gonna be calling this. So get A, we got B. So this is gonna just pass us the value of the button when it's pressed and we're gonna be able to use that to turn on the lights or turn it off. So once we do that, we can actually just do for testing purpose, let's do print button A. So you can see what the value is there. So let's open our debugger so we can at least see if this is working so far. So let's open the terminal so we can at least see if this is working. Let's open the and list this so we can see the port that this is connected to on the Mac. We can just do ls and then pass this value here, dev tty, just so we can make the list shorter. Because if I just do ls like that and dev, for instance, you can see like a bunch of stuff. But if you just want to make it easier, we just do this, and that's going to give us the right port. Just copy that information and then you can say screen and then paste that value and enter. And right now you see true, and that's because we are printing this year. It's gonna print forever. So let's save it and see what's happening here. So it says connecting to Wi-Fi, and there you go. I got an IP address. So that means that this logic here is working properly. This is working properly because there's no um, there's no error. 
and now we are here and that's why when I print this thing here it's gonna print through because it's just saying you know the button is not pressed there you go like that and I'm gonna press that button on the board now so you can see what happened when I do that you see it's false so that means that when it's pressed it's false and that's good to know because we're gonna need that in the logic that we're gonna write next let's do a quick test so if not since we already know that when it's false when you're pressing it so if not um, button a and we can just say that so just to see if we're pressing that button so let's do if not uh, we can say here we can do the print so that way we know pressing button a just so we can make sure that we can see when we're pressing it here and only show it when we press it let's see there you go and you can see how fast it goes if you press it because so we had to add some type of debouncing so it doesn't happen so how do you do that well we can do time sleep and we can pass maybe 25 seconds here so it's connecting so now when i press it you see now it just does it once so it's not going crazy so that's better with this information we can write now a function that can uh send a request to the key light and allow us to turn it on and off so let's do that now so let's define a function here we're going to call it def for define toggle light and we're going to pass a few things here so we're going to pass the light and what what the light is is just one of this we got two urls so we could pass you know either one here so we're going to say light we're also going to pass the state, so we want to either turn it on or off. And we can just do that for now. So let's do that. So let's create our payload. And I don't know if you remember in Charles, there was a payload that was sent to the lights to turn it on and off. So let's get that information real quick. So if you go back to Charles, and we don't need the settings. So if you go to the lights, and let's find the put right here, the put. And if we look at the request, this is the payload and then it, it, it comes back as a, as a response also so we can literally take this let me see if it allows us uh, let's do raw so let's copy all this and we can paste that here and let's just make it a little prettier break it down so that way we can see it better okay so that looks better so we can see that this is the payload we're going to be sending and then this is the important part here that we had to send on and we noticed before that if we send one it's on and if we send zero it's off so we're going to change that into one or we're just going to pass the state since the state is going to be one or zero next let's try to create the request that we're going to use to send to the light turn on and off so let's say response and remember the request variable at the top here so we're going to say request dot put remember it was a put request and we're going to pass the light which is going to be the, the light url which is here one of this we're going to pass it here and we can actually call this light url so we know it's easier to understand we can say light url we're going to pass some data and the data we're going to pass we get to convert it into json that's why we imported JSON class here. So let's say JSON dumps, and we're gonna pass the payload. The other thing we need to pass is the headers. So we're gonna copy that, or we'll just say headers equal to headers. So that's the header that we define here. So to make sure that this work, we can just say response, and we can print the status code and if this worked correctly, we should be able to see the status code printed here. If this doesn't work, we can say exception, so except, and we can catch the exception as E, so that way we can print it, so print E. That's gonna print whatever error we get if it doesn't work, okay? So the other thing we can do here to see, to make sure that it works, we can print the response, because we, if you notice in Charles, we will get a response back from the light if it turns on and off. So let's do that. So we're gonna say if response status code is equal to 200, 
you can say print response.json and let's leave for one second okay so i think with this function we can give it a try so let's go back here so when we press in this button we can say toggle light so we're going to pass one of the lights url to turn it on so we're going to pass this one key light one and the other value was to, to the state so we wanted to turn on so you can pass it one and if we save that, let's look into the console here to make sure everything is working properly. And let's save here and pay attention here. Looking good so far. Got an IP. Okay. So now I'm going to press the button to see if we can turn on the light. Pressed it and nothing happened. Okay. So the problem is that I added the wrong information here. So it didn't work. Let's go back to Charles. And we had to copy this URL here. Copy that. And we have to paste this here. And we can do the same for the other line. Like that. But the other thing is you have to remove this dot from local. Because if you don't do that, then this won't work. So you have to make sure that this dot at the end of local was removed and everything else should be like that. So now if we save this, we should be able to make uh, see it working now. So let's connect into Wi-Fi. Okay, so we are connected. So if I press the letter A, there you go. So now the light just turn on and we can see the response here 200, which is here, I print the response. And we can see also this coming through. So we're gonna turn it off. So to turn it off, you gotta pass zero here. So if I pass zero and save it, and if I press it again now, is turn off and now we got the response again and to see the json result we got to pass this parenthesis that's why we are, we're seeing the object here but it's not uh, unwrapped so let's let's save this real quick so you can see the actual response coming back from the lights okay so now if i press the a and we can see the response here now so now let's let's do the second light so we can say button b is equal to unicorn so we're going to do the same thing get state for uh, b so let's do b state and we can just copy this because it's the same information but we're going to do it at the bottom and now we're going to say b and then for key light we're going to pass the number two because that's this one here and the state one and the same thing you can sleep so if we save that we got an ip so now i'm going to press b Actually, I forgot to rename this to B, so let's do that. So that way we can see A and B. So save it. And now if I press B, there you go. You should see the lights on for B. And I can also press A. And then the lights on for A. And right now the lights are on. That's it. I think I'm going to wrap it up here. But as you can see how easy it was to turn on the light or communicate with the API using CircuitPython, especially with the Adafruit request library that help us to do this request easier here. I'm going to leave a link to the source code in the description of this video and also the link to the online store for the Admega Zero where you can buy one if you don't already have one. All right, that's going to wrap it up for today. The next video is going to be all about soldering. I'm going to give you a few tips on how I solder male, female, and long headed pins. In the meantime, leave me a comment with any topics that you want me to cover in a future video for the Admega Zero. I really hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I release the next video. All right, thank you for watching and I see you in the next one.